Color is one of the most powerful tools of communication. The use of color can evoke strong emotion and convey meaning without the need for words. Because of this, color plays a vital role in pretty much everything in everyone's everyday life, but especially in design. Although much of this is unconscious, it's a phenomenon that has been well documented and measured throughout time. For example, the 2006 study titled The Impact of Color on Marketing, where researchers found that up to 90% of snap judgments made about products were based on color alone. So, it's no coincidence that many of the most successful brands throughout history have used red in their marketing. But when color says so much, how do we know what colors look good together? The answer is color theory, which at first can be a scary sounding subject, but in reality, it's really easy to get enough color theory under your belt to dramatically improve anything you create. So starting with something that everyone is probably already familiar with, primary colors. A primary color is a color that you can obtain by mixing any other colors. They act like an axiom for color. Next is a secondary color, which is just a color made from mixing two primary colors. And the last that we're going to look at is a tertiary color, which is when you mix a primary and a secondary color. When you combine all these together in a circle, you get the traditional color wheel, which was created in the late 17th century by Sir Isaac Newton. The color wheel is like the bible of color theory. It guides artists and designers to find harmonious color combinations based on geometric relationships. You'll see a ton of different variations of the color wheel, but they pretty much all do the same thing, even though they might cover a different color space like CMYK or RGB, and they may have way more steps in between. They pretty much all function the same. So if you learn how to use one, you'll learn how to use them all. Next, let's look at what makes a color a color. And there are four parts of a color. The first part is hue, which is simply the position around the color wheel, like red, blue, yellow, It'll be the brightest and purest version of the color. Next is saturation. This is also known as intensity or chroma. This tells us how vibrant a color is. A desaturated color is dull and gray, while a saturated color is vibrant and strong. Third, we have value, which tells us how light or dark the color is, which can be created in three ways. A shade of a color can be created by adding black, Tints of a color can be created by adding white, and we can get tones of a color by adding gray. The fourth part of a color is temperature. The color wheel can be split into two main groups, warm colors and cool colors, but colors can also change in temperature as we move around the color wheel. We can have a cool red or a warm red, a warm blue or a cool blue. When we combine the four parts of hue, saturation, value, and temperature, we find ourselves with a near endless selection of colors to choose from as we move around the color wheel. With so many options available, let us now explore how colors interact with one another. Color harmony is the use of color that creates a sense of balance and unity in a design. It's the combination of colors that work together to create a sense of balance, proportion, and harmony. We will start by looking at some harmonious color schemes that can easily be implemented, such as monochromatic, complementary, split complementary, triadic, tetradic, and analogous. First, monochromatic color schemes take just one hue from the color wheel and use different shades, tints, and tones to create a group of colors this creates a subtle yet sophisticated look as the various shades of a single color bring out different characteristics of the hue. It is one of the easiest and simplest to implement. Next is complementary color schemes, which use two colors that are opposite on the color wheel. This creates a bold, vibrant look as the two colors have an intense contrast. Most of the time you want one of these colors to act as an accent. Next is split complementary color schemes, which use the same idea as complementary color schemes, but they use one color and the two colors adjacent its opposite on the color wheel. This creates a more subtle contrast than the complementary scheme. 
but still has an interesting dynamic look. Up next is triadic color schemes, which use three colors that are evenly spaced around the color wheel, which creates a very high contrast look. Adding another color gets us a tetradic color scheme, which uses four colors that are evenly spaced around the color wheel. This creates a more complex look than the triadic scheme, as the four colors create a lot of contrast when combined all together. Last is analogous color schemes, which use colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. This creates a harmonious look, as the colors blend together easily. Using analogous color schemes works best when selecting a single dominant hue, and then having the others be accents. Within these color palettes, you can mix and match tints, shades, and tones to create even more possibilities. Because the way a color appears is relative to the colors around it, the same color can seem drastically different from one context to the next, which is why it's important to keep in mind the context that a color appears in the layout, which will be the subject of the next video of this series. I hope that you've learned a bit about color. At first, color theory can appear intimidating, but its very formulaic structure makes it straightforward to incorporate into your designs. Whether you take it as a gradual approach or whether you start from the beginning. The color wheel can guide you anytime you're just reaching for a color and wondering, hey, what should I make this? Or what color should I make the trim in my home? Things like that. It's just, it's easy to just have a formula to go to and already know what color to grab for. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. If you didn't enjoy the video, maybe check out another one and maybe it'll be better. And if you would like to learn more about color theory or looking for color templates, then check out my Patreon page in the link below. Anyways, have a good day.